Good morning friends and welcome back to the farm. It is bright and early on this day. I think this was about 6am and I'm taking Sonny out. He's had his breakfast, taking him out for a little walk before I head off to my second Evercraft fair. As I'm recording this, Sonny will have been with us three months tomorrow and it's been up and down, I'm not going to lie. Um, I've struggled with it way more than I thought I would ever would but he is such a kind and beautiful dog that we've both just got through it together. As I'm walking down the track the willow trees are like releasing this fluff. It looked like it was snowing. It was so pretty, so so cute. I'm sure it's a nightmare if you've got hay fever but for me and the dog we loved it. It looked really pretty. So the van is all loaded up. I just need to have the dog do his morning ablutions um, and then I can head off to the craft fair. But I wanted to take you on this walk. I've been meaning to show you this walk for ages. Um, we walk right down to the bottom of the farm and on the border of our land with the neighbour's land, we've got these beautiful streams and it's all getting a bit overgrown now. Now everything is kind of growing up with spring, but it's just so, so pretty. Um, Sonny at first wouldn't go near the water. It took him a few attempts before he was brave enough to go in, but now he loves it. He absolutely loves it. And we go on a proper little stream adventure most mornings. I generally let him decide which way we're going to walk. Um, and it always makes me smile when he now chooses to walk up the water. So today's market is quite a big one. It's about 45 minute drive from the farm. Uh, and I was really, really hopeful that it was gonna have a lot of footfall. Spoiler alert, it didn't, unfortunately. It was actually really, really quiet. I still did okay in terms of sales. It was certainly worth me going, but I just feel it wasn't very well organized, unfortunately. And it's actually held on the site where we have our massive annual agricultural show called the Royal Cornwall Show which is in June if anyone's in the area around then it's the best show ever I love it so this market was on the Royal Cornwall Showground but as soon as you got onto the site there were absolutely no signs telling you where to actually go for this craft market and I just wonder how many cars drove onto the site couldn't find it and then drove off again so would I do this one again honestly I'm not sure I do need to email the organizers and and give them my feedback and then we'll see if it makes any difference alrighty I have mostly unloaded like all the big boxes and the IKEA bags they're all in there we've got two more bags here with kind of like my personal stuff in so I can carry those in but we can't leave our vehicles outside the building so I'm just going to go and park up oh that's done what are you doing lady just drive right out in front of me so the hall is massive huge um and the guy next to me is called Peter and he's really lovely and he's already told me like where everything is and who everyone is and all of the things so it sounds like I've got the best neighbour ever um, yeah I'm feeling a little bit nervous a little bit excited it's such a big place um, and these guys seem to do this market or this venue quite a lot so let's hope it's good I'm a bit scared <laughs> I feel very much out of my comfort zone on this one anyway let's get going shall we one of the things that I'm really enjoying about doing these markets is like the camaraderie of all the other stall holders. Um, I feel like I've made some really good friends doing just these three little markets that I've done now. And previously, if I'd have walked past a sign to a craft fair and I'd walked into a hall with all these people stood behind their tables smiling at me and wanting to like chat or obviously make a sale I'd have felt really uncomfortable about it but now I wouldn't now I would happily walk into an empty craft fair um, and chat to all the vendors all the makers and see what's what and like I wouldn't feel uncomfortable anymore now that I've done it it's so funny but anyway here's the table all ready and set up um, it's dead easy to set up it takes like 15 minutes maybe 
uh, yeah, and I love how it looks still. The guy that had this stool, I forget his name unfortunately, but I'll try and find a link to him um, and drop it down below. But he's actually a policeman by day and he makes these amazing resin art pieces. This bookmark, honestly, it, I kept picking this thing up. It's so pretty. Um, but I thought I'd have a quick whiz round so you could see the kind of stalls and vendors that are at this event. So this couple here, they had these 3D printed dragons and they're printed in one piece apparently and they've got all these moving parts and I, I don't know anything about 3D printing. But these totally blew my mind. They're so flipping cool. Friends, it is now Friday. So Sunday I did the last market, Monday I worked in the art gallery in Paul Perrot, Tuesday I sat on the sofa with my dog and read a book. All day! It was amazing! I was so exhausted, but it was amazing. I had the best day ever. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and now today, Friday, I have been making, 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 because I've also restocked the two local shops, the shop in town and the gallery in Paul Perrot. Um, so a lot of the stock I had left over from the last market last Sunday is now sat on shop shelves. So it's been a busy three days, well busy two days plus today. So let me spin you round and you can see what I'm working with. So these are the extra bookmarks that I finished off yesterday. I just need to um, clean them up and put the resiline on. The resiline like protects, it keeps the um, engraving black and it also protects the leather. So I've got that to finish off, which won't take long. And luckily the resolution dries really, really quickly. So that's gonna be a nice little job. So these are the cable tidies that I've got ready so far. They're kind of split into the four colors. This is the bronze, this is the gold, this is the gunmetal, and this is the silver. Um, so they're badly split up into their colors, that's better. Um, just so I had a kind of even mix of the four different colors of the hardware. So I've got a lot more in the office to finish off, um, which hopefully will be enough, I guess. Honestly, it's gonna have to be enough. Um, I've also had a clear up. This is my journal here, excuse that. I've got a pile more leather here that I can make cable tidies from. Uh, I think that's it. The only other thing that's gonna be a change at this market is I'm gonna sell my mandalas. Um, this one's all a bit wobbly at the moment, but we'll get that tidied up. Um, these are just little hanging mandalas. But then I also have these ones that I've made with an elastic band at the top so they can hang over your wing mirror. So these are for the cars. I don't expect to sell them and I don't really sell them in the shop or the gallery. I think I'm, I've sold like a handful in the year that I've been doing this, but I just think they're gonna add a little bit of extra pretty to the table. And I thought it'd be a good way to get them out of the shops and actually hopefully at some point they might sell, but they're definitely not one of my best sellers. I've never put them on the website because each one is different and it means I would have to photograph each one individually rather than just people kind of guessing what they're gonna get through the post. And because they don't really sell in person, I, I can't see them selling online. So if I can move them through the market, then that would be great. And like I say, they'll just add a little bit of prettiness to the table. I've also got to make lunch for myself and for Johnny. 
and I'm going to get my hair cut this afternoon. So I'm not sure if I've ever talked about this on this channel before, but I have a little bit of a phobia of hairdressers, hair salons. It, I don't enjoy the experience of having my hair cut. I don't like all the mirrors. I don't like all the chit chat. I just, I don't like it. it. It's not something that makes me feel happy. Like I have friends that love it and would go to the hair salon every single week if they could. I am not that person. I find it very deeply uncomfortable. But I am so fed up with this mop on my head. Um, so I am going to go and get my hair cut. I've been to this lass once before. She's very lovely and very down to earth. And it's her salon is like in a shed in her garden. She calls it a cabin. It's a shed. It's really cute. Um, she's really, really lovely. And I've been once and I had just a kind of a trim because... I told her that I had issues with salons um, and she was really lovely and and yeah so I'm going back today I'm going this afternoon um, and I'm hopeful that I will look a little bit different after this appointment because this is doing my head in so I'm gonna get my headphones on and I am gonna get to work oh I am so happy I just went to pack these guys away and I found <laughs> this huge bag of them already that's more than enough even if I don't get to make up the other cable tidies today that's plenty for this weekend oh that makes me feel so happy Saturday morning I'm just putting my makeup on um, we'll pack a few last minute things up and then we can hit the road I hope it's busy it's a real risk doing markets not for someone like me that's got stock that can sit on a shelf for six months but for like um, like the food stores those street food vendors at that last one I went to like they have to buy in a lot of fresh food I would imagine and if it doesn't get used that's their cash flow isn't it that's their money down the drain oh and the haircut it went kind of well like nobody can style curly hair like a curly haired person can in fairness so I've had to wash it again this morning which is kind of annoying because she did use some beautiful products on it yesterday so I'm hopeful that I'm gonna like how it falls once it's dry <sighs> just taking the sunny bob out for a walk for his morning poo walk and there was no poo so unfortunately, Johnny is gonna have to take him out. On a Saturday, we always go into town and we go and do our shopping for the week and go out for breakfast too. So I imagine Johnny's gonna be doing all of that on his own today without me, um, which means he's gonna have to take the dog out for a poo first, otherwise he possibly risks unwanted consequences if you catch my drift. Right, I'm gonna finish up here, get loaded up, and I guess I'll see you down there. And this is me setting up at the third and final market um, that I have booked for the time being. This is in a little place called Charlestown, which if you've ever watched Poldark, this is where the ships are. And I forgot to go down onto the harbour and actually get some footage. Charlestown does get a lot of visitors because of the Poldark connection, I believe. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> this hall was like right at the top end of Charlestown. It wasn't anywhere down, down near the water. And unfortunately, this was the quietest of all three markets. Um, and I didn't do very good at all at this one. I took £107. So again, some could say that it was worth me going. Um, but honestly, it was a really long day and I didn't take much money. So it's really, really difficult, isn't it? But that said, I did have lots of fun catching up with people. There was actually a lady vending there that I'd known years and years and years ago. She used to work for my mum many years ago. So it was lovely to catch up with her again. We had a right old natter. There were lots of beautiful craftspeople here. It was really high quality of product. It's just a shame that there wasn't more people coming in the doors. I don't know what the key is, how to find markets that have great footfall. Uh, and if those are the ones that you have to pay like £600 for a table for, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm still so new to this. If there are any experts out there, any pros to doing handmade markets, please let me know down below how you find good ones. Um, what do you look out for? Because I do make sales. It's just we need more people through the doors to actually 
make more sales, if that makes sense. All right, that is us now officially caught up on all three markets thus far. I have more booked throughout the summer and I've even got a Christmas market booked as well. So let's see how that all maps out. But the number one thing that I am loving about these markets, and it's happened to every single market so far, is meeting some of you guys. Oh my God, it's been so cool. Unfortunately, the only proof I have of this is this one gorgeous photograph. This is Anthony and his boy, Henry. Henry has bought some of my products through the website previously. Uh, Anthony, his dad, is a regular in the comments here on YouTube, but also over on social media. Um, and it was just so lovely to put faces to their names and the others that have come to say hi. Um, so thank you. They came all the way from Truro to see me at Charlestown. Uh, and it was just, it was so lovely. So, so lovely to meet you guys. Thank you so much for making the effort. So if anyone else out there wants to hook up and say hi, then the best place to find out where I'm gonna be is over on Facebook. That's where I'm most active. And I try really hard to remember to drop the dates that I'm gonna be in the shops locally and also when I've got a market coming up. So if you're on Facebook, then that's probably the best place to find out where I'm gonna be. And it would just be so lovely to meet more of you, but please remind me to get a photo because I'm a bit rubbish at that. I get so into the conversations with you guys that I totally forget to take photos, honestly. Right, this video is now so, so late. I need to get this one edited and published because I'm really looking forward to getting started on the next video. It's gonna be a cracker. So as always, look after yourselves, keep smiling, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!